Today's lesson objective is 3.3f, represent equivalent fractions with denominators of 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8, using a variety of objects and pictorial models, including number lines. So we're going to basically be looking at multiple representations of ways that we can look at equivalent fractions using a variety of objects, pictures, uh, models, things that we can use to represent these fractions. This first one here, we have what's called Cuisinaire rods. Um, basically, these are just colored rods that can represent different values that you assign them. So here we're assigning this yellowish rod as our whole, meaning that from if you have the length of the entire rod, that represents one whole object. The smaller red rod, okay, we're going to use to represent force. Okay, so you can kind of see that if I were to extend this red rod, another piece that's as long as these smaller pieces here, these one-fourth pieces, I would equal the whole. So each one is worth one-fourth, okay, each of the small pieces here. And then we have a smaller rod down here that we're using to represent eights, okay? So I want you to notice here that for every two of these eight pieces, we get one of these one-fourth pieces, okay? So this tells us that one, two, two eighths is equal to one-fourth because they're the same size piece out of our whole up here, okay? So if we read the statement here, three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths because they represent the same amount of the whole, we can see that from our pictorial representation. One, two, three-fourths is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, because for every 2 eighths you get 1 fourth. Okay, so these are what we call equivalent fractions. They have the same value as each other. Okay, here's another representation. This is using a ruler. Okay, so we're using the, the customary side of the ruler in inches. Okay, so if you look at from 0 to 1 on the ruler, you'll notice that this long line here in the middle represents one half. Okay, this this segment can be broken up into two equal size pieces. Each of those pieces is worth a fourth. We know that because it takes two one-fourth pieces and then two more one-fourth pieces, so four-fourths to equal one whole. So then only two-fourths would equal one half. So again, they're the same amount out of the whole, so these are equivalent fractions. One half is equivalent to two fourths. Okay. All right. You may have gotten to play with these before in a classroom. Um, these little linking cubes that you can put together. We've linked eight of them together, and we're calling that our whole. Okay. So the eight yellow cubes linked together represent our one whole. Okay. You get to designate what size your whole is. In this case, we're saying eight cubes represents our whole. So if I break those eight cubes, if I make another one the same length out of red, okay, and I break it apart, so I got four in each part, then each part would represent one half of my whole, correct? So these four red cubes would be half of the whole, these four red cubes would be half of the whole. Together they make one whole. All right, but if I again take those red ones and I break them in half using different colors, so here two blues and two greens is equal to one of these red pieces. All right, and then we get this kind of different color blue and different color, maybe orangish color here, representing these. So in all together, we have four different colors. So each color represents a fourth, okay? But if I'm comparing it to the one half size piece, it takes two colors to equal the red piece, right? So if each color is representing one fourth, it takes one, two fourths, to equal my one half size red piece, because this was half of the whole, which was the yellow one. All right, so again, one two fourths equals one half. All right, just looking at a different way to represent it. All right, so let's change up our fraction a little bit here. For this one, we got one third. Okay, so again, the entire strip from beginning to end represents our whole. Okay, this is just a piece of paper that I folded into three equal size pieces. Okay, so each piece of the paper from fold to fold 
represents one third of the entire strip because it takes three of these pieces to make the whole. Okay. Now, if I took that same piece of paper and I folded it in half one more time, it would create six equal size pieces uh, for, between the folds. So now each piece is equivalent to one sixth. Okay. So if I shade in the first two pieces of my one third strip, I've shaded in two thirds of my folded strip. Now, if I want to find out how many six it takes to equal that same amount, I have to notice that it takes two of these sixes, sixes to make one single third. So if I'm trying to make two thirds, it's going to take one, two, three, four, four sixths to equal two thirds. Okay? So the fractions four sixths and two thirds are equal in value. So they're what we call equivalent fractions. All right? Okay, so here's you another representation. Now we're going to look at two different geometric shape pieces. The first one on the left, we're using a circle to represent our hole. Okay, so just a simple, complete circle to represent our hole. Now, if I break that circle down the middle, so it becomes two halves, each half would be one half of the circle. So this is representing one half of my whole circle. Now, if I took each of those halves, and I break them into three equal size pieces, then that means it's going to take a total of six of those pieces to make my whole, right? Because each half is being broken into three pieces and it takes two halves to make a whole. So six of these pieces, so each one's worth one six. So if the question was how many six does it take to equal one half, you can see that it takes one, two, three of these one six pieces to be the same size as a one half piece of my circle. So again, here we're saying that the fraction one half is equivalent or the same as three six. Okay, because they take up the same amount of my whole. You can do the same thing with the square diagram. So here I've got a geometric square that's representing my whole. If I cut my square right down the middle, it's going to make two one half pieces. So here's my one half piece. So it takes two of these to make the square. Again, if I take that one half piece and I break it into three equal size pieces, well, it takes two halves to make a whole, so that would be a total of six pieces to make the whole. So each piece is again worth one six. Well, you notice it takes three of those one six pieces to equal my one half size piece. So even using our squares, our geometric shape instead of our circle, it still shows the same thing. It shows that it takes three six to equal one half. So those fractions are identical. They have the same value. They're equivalent. Okay? Because they each represent a half of the whole. All right. We're going to look at one other way to model these fractions. All right. This model uses what we call sets of objects. So these are each individual objects. The triangles are each individual triangles. Together, they make up our set or our whole. So we got six individual triangles that when together represent our whole, our whole set, okay? So we can break this set in several different ways. We could put two triangles in a group, and so you'd have three total groups, right? Or we can make every single triangle its own single group, like they're showing down here. So every single triangle is in a group by itself, all right? The first way we did it, where we put two triangles in a group, what it did is it broke our entire set into thirds because you can make three of these types of groups here or two triangles in a group okay when i do it, every triangle in its own single group then out of my whole each triangle represents one sixth because there's six of these groupings okay but like before if you put them on top of each other you can see that two thirds is the same as four six because you get the same number of triangles in two-thirds using this grouping up here as you do the number of triangles you get in four-sixths using this grouping down here. Okay, either way you're getting four triangles all together out of the six. So two-thirds and four-sixths are equal or equivalent. Okay, here's one more example using a set of objects. Here my set of objects is these eight colored squares. So the eight color squares represent my whole or my set. Okay, and again, you can group these in different ways. We could group it, um, one of each color can belong to a group, 
I do that, then that makes four equal size groups. So each group is worth a fourth of the set. Or I could make every single square be its own single group. If I do that, there's going to be eight separate groups that way. So each individual square is worth one eighth. Okay. Well, if I go back to my one that has two squares per group and I block off three of those, that would represent three out of the four possible groups in my set. So that's three fourths. Well, if I try to block off the same number of squares in this second grouping, and we said each square stands alone, so each one's worth the one eighth, then that would be six eighths, because each square would represent one eighth. And so this is showing you six eighths is the same as three fourths, because in the end it encompasses just as many squares as my original set of eight. It encompasses six of them, no matter which way we group it. Okay, so three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. All right, just to make it a little bit more fun, you don't always have to have geometric shapes as your sets. You can let anything represent your sets. So here we're letting four pieces of fruit represent our set, our, our whole. Okay, and so depending on how I break that, I could just group the bananas in one group and then the apple and orange in its own separate group. So that would be breaking the set in half because you have two in each group. So that breaks in half. That's one way to look at it. Or you can make each piece of fruit its own separate group. And so that would make four groups out of my set. So then each piece of fruit would be representing one fourth. Okay. Well, one half, as you can see, is equivalent to two fourths. Okay. Because half of my fruit was bananas. And if I represent, let each piece of fruit represent its own individual group, each piece of fruit's a fourth. So two fourths is the same or equal to one half. Okay. Now this model here is what we call a fr fraction strip diagram. Um, I like this. This is a great visual to help see what kinds of fractions are equivalent to each other. Here on the top you have your one hole. Okay, and everything below that is some kind of breakup of the hole. So if I break into two equal pieces, they're each worth a half. Three equal pieces are worth a third. Four equal pieces, each one's worth a fourth. Six equal pieces, each one's worth a six. And, oops, sorry, let me back up. And eight equal pieces, each one's worth an eighth. So what's really cool about doing this is you can literally see which fractions are equivalent to each other by simply following the line straight down. If this line lines up with another line, then you know that whatever's behind that line is an equal fraction. So here you see one half is equal to one two fourths because those two lines match up. It's also equal to, if you look at this line, matches up 1, 2, 3, 6. And this was this bottom strip got moved a little bit. It actually should line up. Because um, here you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 should be the same as 3, 6. Should be the same as 2, 4. Should also be the same as 1 half. All those fractions are equivalent to one another. They're all the same value. The only one that can't be represented to model like the rest is the one-third pieces, because there is no line here for the one-third pieces. Okay, you can make these fraction strips at home, just get you one, two, three, four, five, six different colored strips of paper, cut them all to be equal length, and then just divide them appropriately for the um, size of fraction you want. Um, get your parents to help you do that. This is a great way to kind of look at equivalent fractions. All right here I can see, look, one, two, fourths is equal, I'm sorry, one, two, eighths, is equal to one fourth. So one fourth and two eighths are the same value. All right? You can have a little fun with that and play with that. The final way I want to show you here is on a number line. Um, using a number line, again, using zero to one as my whole, you can just like the fraction strips, break it into one half pieces, one fourth pieces, one eighth pieces, and everywhere a marking lines up, that represents an equivalent fraction. So all three of these fractions are the same value. These two fractions are the same value. These two fractions are the same value. So anywhere you have a marking lineup, those fractions have the same value as each other. You can do the same thing with one-thirds. Sorry that for the being blurry here. But these are one-third size pieces. These are one-sixth size pieces. So one-thirds and two-sixths are the same value. Two-thirds and four-sixths are the same value. Okay. Uh, this concludes our video on equivalent fractions. Thank you.